loss of life on the Arizona accounts for approximately half of all the lives lost during the attack. This includes every member of the heralded USS Arizona Band, 23 sets of brothers, and even a father and his son. The USS Arizona Memorial is 184 feet long and is suspended directly over, but not touching, the wreckage of the USS Arizona. It was completed in 1962 and dedicated on Memorial Day that year. The designer and architect was Alfred Price, who created three main parts, the entry room, assembly room, and shrine room. You'll notice that the memorial has two peaks on each end and sags in the center. Mr. Price stated that his design represented American pride before the attack, the sudden depression that followed it, and America's eventual rise to victory at the end of the war. At the very back of the memorial, nearest to Fort Island, is the Shrine Room. Covering its back wall are the names of 1,177 American servicemen who died on board. Back on December 7th, can elect to have their ashes placed within the wreck. To date, over 40 men have already rejoined their shipmates on board. Richard Chamberlain, Dr. Kildare, Thornburg, Shogun, that used to be his house. We sold that house 24 years ago, three and a half million dollars. Well, that was big money in those days. He still lives in that area down below, in the Ritzy area, 30 minutes down. Simple. Entrance on the left, start on the left, walk across the crater, up to the peak. One dollar a person. See all of Honolulu, and you look to the left, and you see the other side of the island. Do that hike. Yep. Yeah, look at all the apartments and condos down there. Remember we saw that this morning? This is the back door. This morning we saw the front door. So, the most congested area in Honolulu. Right. Yep. Remember gang, this used to be residential. Now this is where you rent. Right here. This is the area we call Marquee. You would just like to grab that flower and let it open up the hotel. Ah, uh, nice. I'll bring your cameras out. These pair of shoes. Black, brown, and white. <laughs> That's all they need. <laughs> well, President Marcos passed away in 1989. The Melda wanted to put him in Punchbowl Crater, but they said no, he wasn't a U.S. soldier. So she took him past the mountains to the right to another cemetery. They didn't want him either because he was controversial, but she kept begging, please, please, I have no place to put him. So they said, okay, we'll put him in a mausoleum. 
temporary. He was in the mausoleum for four years, forty thousand a month. Wow, four years, forty thousand a month, one point nine million dollars. Guess who paid for it? The U.S. government. They say the U.S. government was responsible for bringing him to Hawaii, so they had to pay the bill. Then he got permission to go back to the Philippines. That's where he is now. Remember the Philippine president put him in the hero's cemetery? A lot of people, a lot of people not happy about that, but the president said he was the president. So he, he put him in the hero's cemetery. Because I look to the right, Chinese cemetery. You notice the Chinese? Go to the next cluster of homes up there.